The Whitaker neighborhood has a completely different look and feel to it compared to most neighborhoods here in Oregon. That uniqueness has always been a point of pride for the people who live there. But some wonder if recent changes to the landscape are sucking some of the flavor out of the neighborhood. KZI 9 News reporter Sean Shoppy looks into both sides of the growing debate. It is said that with every ending comes a new beginning. That the close of one chapter is nothing more than an opportunity to write a new one. This appears to be the case for the Whitaker neighborhood, which seems to be sitting at the edge of yet another metamorphosis. This is a very uh, exciting stage for Whitaker. It's on the upswing, definitely, by attracting a lot of more um, local creative businesses. Whitaker neighborhood is a place that's growing and prospering today. There are restaurants there that you won't find in other parts of town. There's entertainment there that you won't find in other parts of town. There's retail products that you won't find elsewhere. That ability to offer something unique has never been in question when it comes to the wit. Now though, those offerings appear to be drawing new faces to the neighborhood, and with them, a new identity. It does feel different. I, so from five years ago until now, I see a lot more long-term productive businesses in the neighborhood than I did then. I think that there's been some businesses that were a good fit that seemed accepted because I know that's been a big problem and I think that that brings other people to the neighborhood. But bringing outsiders into the neighborhood isn't necessarily being welcomed by all. It's bringing people in from from the rich neighborhoods you know, that never used to come into the Whitaker, and they're the ones who are driving the Beamers and the Mercedes and everything. I can't even park my stinking ass stupid little Volvo, you know, anywhere. Tim Lewis is what you might consider old school Whitaker. His fondest memories of the neighborhood are tied to the protest era of the 90s. I get upset sometimes when I think of what it was and I and all the things that we were doing there back in the 90s, when I now I see it sort of gentrified. People say gentrification, and I laugh because nothing is really being gentrified in Eugene. And that really is the unspoken debate that seems to be lurking quietly along Whitaker streets. I think that the term gentrification is something that is um, a term widely used. For, for right or wrong, it, it's a word that is vilified, perhaps. Gentrification homogenization, or is it simply the hands of time molding something new? Oh, the times, they are to change this particular thing too much would be taking away, I think, a little bit of Eugene's heart. I think it's just, it's being gentrified and some of the spice and some of the life and everything is, is starting to uh, fade away. I have a friend who used to live here, now he lives in Southern Oregon, and he hadn't been back in quite a while. And he was at the bar in the Meiji there. He said, yeah, it's become so hip. All the hipsters are here. He was kind of grousing about it, but you know, it's, it's a hipper place. It's not quite so scruffy. A lot of people just flat out aren't gonna like change, and there's nothing that you can't change, you can't do anything about it. While many new businesses have played a role in that change, there is one in particular whose presence has made the biggest impact. I think Kasi has been fantastic for this neighborhood. Ninkasi, which has handled been hugely successful. Ninkasi gives so much back to the neighborhood that it's not even funny. Ninkasi, sitting in the heart of the neighborhood, almost acting as the anchor for other small businesses, the way a Macy's or a Target does for a mall. It's been great. Uh, we've really enjoyed the neighborhood. Um, had a real positive response from almost everyone here. They're friendly. They're outgoing. They draw people from all over town. That's definitely brought more people down here, uh, more revenue, 
and more people who care about this area. Ninkasi seems to best represent the new face of Whitaker. It is homegrown, having been started by two guys making beer in their garage and prospering while embracing many of the tenants that have made Whitaker famous. This neighborhood's been around for a lot longer than we have, and we're just lucky to have ended up here and, uh, and been able to sort of embrace that spirit and, and to fit in with that. But if Ninkasi is the little guy in a world of Budweiser's and Coors, is it also possible that it is simultaneously playing the role of corporate giant in the wit? I think it was at the street fair two years ago, somebody climbed up there and almost got arrested. He was yelling about how he uh, didn't like the big sign and the presence. And I see Nikasi and giant buildings, and I see, you know, all these pizza parlors and all these hot and all these fancy cars parked there on Friday nights, and I can't even get a parking spot at my buddy's house anymore. You know, all that sort of pisses me off. Which means the latest news won't likely sit well with folks who share Lewis's feelings. Not only is Ninkasi expanding, but Oakshire Brewery is now setting up shop there as well, as is Hop Valley Brewing, forming the beginnings of a brewery district. We'll soon shake your windows and vibrate your walls for the times they are changing. Even Lewis admits, though, it is in the end inevitable. The hands of time will always tick on, no matter how hard we may try to slow them down. But it is just change. And, and I mellow out when I think about that. This is the Whitaker. This is a little different, you know, from these other hoods. And, and I think it still is. Your old road is rapidly aging. Please get out of the new one if you can't lend your hand for the time. If you missed any part of the series, just go to KZI.com. All five parts are online.